What I'm going to do now is I cloned the repository. I'm going to the Elasticsearch Fluentd uh, folder and I'm going to label all the nodes. Um, you can see that I cheated. I already did this, so uh, it will give an error. If you do it the first time, you won't see this error. So the second thing what I will do is execute the Elasticsearch script. So let's have a quick peek in what this script is doing. I'm uh, creating a new namespace for this demo. It's easy for cleaning up. This is stuff when I was experimenting with the uh, file storage. Uh, so within Azure, you got managed disks and uh, you can also use uh, uh, Azure file as a, a piece of blob storage. Then I'm deleting the default uh, uh, storage class and I'm creating my own storage class and the definition of the storage class is defined in this file which is in the same folder. Then I'm creating a stateful set which is one of the Kubernetes uh, entities where you basically uh, 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 so you got replica stats and uh, 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 replica sets, for example, uh, which which are stateless, and with a stateful set, basically what you do is you the, the, uh, uh, assign a, st a piece of storage to a certain node, and this is called the stateful set. Then I'm going to expose the Elasticsearch service. So let's see what I've done. You see, it's now uh, being deployed. Uh, I switched to this uh, I switch to this namespace by doing AZ AKS or sorry by kubectl uh, uh, config uh, use context then the name of the cluster is AKS demo cluster and the namespace I will set to EFK demo. So now when I'm using the kubectl and I do get pods, I'm in the namespace of the EFK demo. So the second part, what I'm going to do, or the third part, is uh, configuring Fluent D. So let's have a quick look in the Fluent D config. Here you see I have a config map and I have the the service or the the the, the daemon set. So uh, on every uh, node I'm installing this Fluent D daemon, and uh, this daemon is basically a pipeline where the logging is uh, uh, written to. So uh, in the past we had Logstash or it still exists, but now more and more people are using Fluent D. If you have a quick peek in the config you will see that, uh, let's go here to the Fluent D config map, that here I have an, uh, configured an input source and uh, besides that it's also listening to the output of the containers and here you see that my output of the Fluent D is into the Elasticsearch database. So this is the service which is on the Kubernetes site and the service will be listening to port 9200 and that's the service I just created with the first script or the second script. The last part what I'm going to do is install Kibana and when I have a look I will wait till everything is running and then I come back to you. So let's have a look. I see that all the pods are running now. Let's see how it's going with the services. Here you see that I have an internal Elasticsearch uh, database uh, internally available and it's available on port 9200 and you can see that I made a public endpoint for the Kibana for this demo and this one is listening on port 5600. So let's open this. And usually it needs to do some indexing uh, before that and that usually also takes a couple of minutes of time. In the meantime I'm having a look at the logging of Elasticsearch. 
Let's see if it's yeah, that's fine. Let's see if we have stuff. If Kibana is doing stuff, yes, it is. So let's give Kibana some time now. So Kibana loaded the page and the initial page you will see it's the create button and this is for creating the index. So here you see that it has several index patterns. That's fine. No, oh, that's fine by me. Okay. So I'm going to the discover, see if I already have some entries in my Elasticsearch database. I do. So let's see what we have here. Um, one of the cool things in Kibana is uh, basically that you have uh, the discover button and the discovery, it's uh, uh, a filter over all your logins. Then you can have plugins where you can visualize uh, your queries. So in the first part you create your queries and the second part you can use those queries and visualize them with several uh, charts. And in the third part you can design a dashboard where you use this chart that you have created in the step before. So let's go over step by step. And f let's first start by creating a query and that only uses the namespace for our EFK demo. So what we can do is say, okay, here I'm only interested in the namespace and I'm interested in what's being logged. And then I will say I'm only interested in the namespace EFK demo and I can just use this one. So. As you might know, uh, uh, Elasticsearch is using Lucene, and Lucene has, uh, yeah, I find it a quite complex uh, uh, syntax, but um, uh, with this uh, buttons, it's quite easy to uh, create a query. One, you can also click on this one, and uh, here you got the, the syntax for Elasticsearch. Uh, so here you see that I created a query for the EFK demo. Uh, so let's go to the next step and actually create uh, my Game of Thrones application. It's a wonderful application where you can vote on your favorite Game of Thrones house. So uh, first we're going to create a new namespace named uh, GOT Web App. So let's have a quick look. So here we are creating a new namespace. Within this namespace, we are creating Redis. We're just pulling Redis from uh, the Docker Hub and then we're exposing Redis under this port only internally. Uh, let's see, let's uh, then actually deploy the application by execute got.sh. Let's have a quick look here. So this is stuff I already did. You, you will find the source code for this thing here. It's basically a Python app that uses Flask and it, it loads uh, uh, the uh, pictures from this folder, static, GOT. And here you see that I have Erin, Baratheon, Dorn, the Lannisters, uh, Stark, and of course the Targaryens. So, um, yeah, let's see how we are going. And uh, of course, I'm now interested in a different namespace. I'm interested in the namespace of the T web app. And here I see that it's already running. Let's see if we have services available as well. So here you see I've exposed the GOT web app under this public IP under port 5000. Let's have a quick look. Mm, name 
name space is GLT web up. Okay. So basically what I'm doing here is uh, you can vote on your favorite house. Uh, and uh, now let's just uh, click on a couple of them. Oh, I should click on the proper one. Uh, Stark, I see that my uh, layout is a little bit off. Uh, but basically this will all generate logging. If you have a look in the source code. Uh, up the PY. The only thing what I'm doing is I'm configuring basic config. I'm using the standard out. And here every time I click on the Aaron or Stark, I'm logging a message. Somebody liked the Aaron's or the Starks or Baratheon family. So it's not the most nice. Uh, I, I will see if I can uh, improve the uh, layout a little bit. But um, uh, the idea is clear, right? So of course we like to see this logging back in Kibana. So let's change this query and change the namespace instead of EFK demo we do GOT web up. And here you see all the log me messages which occurred in my namespace. So what I want to do is save this query. And I will say uh, Game of Train, Game of Thrones favorite families. Let's save it. Then I'm going to create a visualization, and I'm going to create first of all a gorge. This gorge is using this query. You see that there are that there are currently 54 messages already. I'm going to save this. Game of Thrones Gorge. Gorge login. I don't know how to pronounce it. Sorry for that. The second thing I'm going to create. So let's go back here. Visualize. I'm going to create another one. And here I want to see an overview of all the families. And I'm using again this query. But what I'm doing now is I'm going to split the chart and I'm going to use filters. And the first filter will be log. And in the log, I expect Stark. Let's add the filter. Then I'm going to do log and I'm going to do the same for Targaryen. Then I'm going to do the same for uh, Targaryens. And then I'm going to do the same for the Tullys. And of course the Lannisters. Of course from Lannisters. I see I made a spelling error there. So who did we miss? The Starks, the Tullys, the Tyrells. Ah, for now I, I, I think we're fine. Um, of course we have the Great Joys and whatever. So hmm, Targaryens, let's see what happens. Hmm, I haven't clicked enough. So let me click here on a couple of Starks, a couple of Baratheons, a couple of Dorns. Oh, the Dorns, I should do the Dorns is there. The Baratheons, the Lannisters. So let's see what happens now. Let's save it. Mm, Faro Fems Save. So here we got the Starks, they have five, the Lannisters have three. Mm, I should have more, right? So here I have my overview of all the families. Uh, but I don't like these colors to be honest. So what I'm going to do is create a new visualization 
also a vertical bar going to again to the same query but then instead of a split chart I will use split series and here again I will use filters here I will say log starks add filter then I like to have a log on the Lannisters Lannisters then I would have to log on Targaryens add a filter and I would like to have a log on Baratheons and then a log on the Greyjoys Greyjoys then the Tullys as well and then uh, Tyrells I think I have them all then Tyrells so uh, I am missing one am I not mm. it's the Baratheons the Greyjoys the Greyjoys don't have any votes let, let me vote for them ah, okay they have a couple of us so let's see Great choice. Maybe I made a typo. Let's have a look. Let's first save it. Uh, so, Game of Thrones families colored. Now, I think you get the picture, right? Let's uh, not uh, spend too much time on this. So, now we're going to create a dashboard. And in the dashboard, I'm going to use the colored visualization. Then I'm going to use the gorge as well, and I will call save this and migrate dashboard. So let's save it. So what I like to do here is I like to see the log files, the last, uh, let's say the last four hours, and I like to do the reporting. Sorry. What I want to do is refresh it every 10 seconds. I like to have a fresh screen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have one screen open with this visualization and the other screen has my wonderful Game of Thrones app. So I'm going to close this. So at I will put some votes out. I will vote for the Starks. So here you see that I'm voting for the Starks. So the Starks are the brown ones. They should have grown. They are now 7. And now they are 16. And let's go for the... Nah, I cannot vote for the Lannisters, sorry. For the Greyjoys then. Let's give them a couple of votes as well. And you should see that within 10 seconds, you see that the great joys. Uh, I probably made a mistake here. But, uh, so let's see what the mistake is. Show you some troubleshooting. So we're looking here. Ah, here you see the great joys is a different spelling. So I'm going to the visualization here I'm going to here a log great choice great choice so let's have it like this let's save it here so now I see something happening then I will save it save Let's go back to the dashboard, and now you see it has been changed as well. So, let's do the last thing. Let's give the... T oh, okay, let's give a couple to the Lannisters as well, and a couple to the Gradius. Now, you should see it here appearing very soon. So, as you can see, it's a pretty powerful tool for application logging. Hope you guys like the demo. Uh, all the source code is available in GitHub.